Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, we're glad you could join us today because we are going to be talking about navigating grief and trauma with a real expert, a person, Heidi, I'm kind of interested because in talking to our guest today, because when um, your brother died, I uh, was, was a clinical nurse specialist in psychology at the University of Rochester. So I knew a lot about grief and loss and thought about it. And I know our guest today is a social worker. So it will be interesting to get her take on it. Uh, you talk the talk and then you end up walking the walk. So hi, mm -hmm. do you want to introduce our guest? Sure. Um, our guest today is Susan Hannah Finn McNabb. And as you said, mom, she is a social worker, an educator, and an author. She founded A to Z Healing Toolbox after the death of her bagpiper, surfer, professor, husband. She is the author of the five-time award-winning book, A to Z Healing Toolbox, a practical guide for navigating grief and trauma with intention. And she is the programs and education manager for Soaring Spirits International. Welcome to the show, Susan. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Oh, it's great having you on, Susan. And, and uh, I wanna get right to it. So. You are a social worker, right? You were a social worker at that time. You'd been Correct. in Australia. You came back from Australia with uh, you have one child. You got this great husband. And tell us what happened. Well, what happened was we were coming back to the U.S. to resettle, and my husband was here for a month. Went for a drive in the local mountains and never returned. Oh. He was missing for two weeks. And during that two weeks, that was the trauma piece for me. Where is he? How do we find him? Hiring a private investigator, filing missing person report. And then two weeks later, I got a knock on the door from the medical examiner saying that a nature photographer was in this beautiful area in the mountains near a lake, and he saw a car in the ravine. So Brent's car was down there as was his body. And at age 41, I suddenly became a widowed person, a traumatized person, a grieving person, and a person who's now solo parenting a five-year-old. Yes, I studied grief and trauma in graduate school, and I went down to my files, which were all in paper, and I threw them in the trash because <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing made sense. You know, reading it and having it be someone else's story is one thing. Having it be your own story is quite another. Yeah, it, it, you have to live it. Correct. I mean, it's just, I, I, I don't know what your thought is, but it feels to me like grief and trauma is a lot more physical than we deal with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I was really adamant about when I put my book together, it couldn't just be navigating grief. It had to be navigating grief and trauma because so many people have profound trauma experiences embedded in the grief experience. Yeah. And that's something that we don't often talk about. It's, oh, your son died, your brother died, your husband died. Oh, that's grief. But the circumstances surrounding the death can cause quite a lot of trauma for people. So we have these experiences, right, that are missing person or military death or car accident or suicide, all of these traumatic losses. Grief is and trauma is very physical, spiritual, social, emotional, psychological. For me, there was not one piece of me, one ion in my body that had been left untouched. Yeah. You know, uh, I remember... Um... Kaplan, remember that old article from the Coconut Grove Fire, which was really the beginning of the grief and loss theory where he interviewed people. I, I, I was reading that, I'll never forget. And I could see myself going through everything he said. And there's, you just do it. I mean, yearning and searching and waves of grief and, right. you know, those, what kind of trauma symptoms did you have? Oh, gosh. 
all of them. <laughs> I remember <laughs> going to, um, I went to a center for integrative medicine here in San Diego. And it was, you know, Western doctors meet Eastern practitioners in the name of helping people heal from a variety of things. Could be a heart condition or a situation like mine. So I walk in and this doctor, he said, what can I do for you today? And I had my DSM with my list of PTSD symptoms highlighted and I handed the book to him and I said, this is what's happening with me. I have eye twitches, nightmares, flashbacks. I I can't sleep. I am very jumpy. I'm irritable. Um, my nervous system is completely off kilter yeah. and I can't function. And so that became more and more conversations about, okay, meditation, biofeedback, therapy, uh, medication, you know, what are all the different tools that I can use to help heal this trauma piece? And like you said, to, to get your nervous system back in alignment and calm it down. Exactly. So for me, the two huge pieces of getting my nervous system back in order were learning how to breathe again, right? If we can, if we can learn how to breathe, and calm that breath down, then we also lower our heart rate and our blood pressure and everything's connected. Mm -hmm. So I did numerous sessions of biofeedback, which is an interesting way to be, um, you know, calmly sitting in a chair in a therapist office, a biofeedback therapist office connected to electrodes, watching a screen and actually doing certain breathing exercises so that I could see on the screen how I could make my breath match my heart rate and doing that homework daily of that breath work. That was a huge, huge piece of healing. Now tell me, how far were you down the road when you did this? Um, probably five months in. Mm -hmm. I was in shock for so long. I had a five-year-old. I was on autopilot. And, um, and how the book came to be, the A to Z Healing Toolbox book came to be, was my hitting the ground, you know, first it was crawling, then it was walking, then it was running all over the city of San Diego, looking for resources to help my son and I heal. And so it was, it was a years, I mean, it was years of searching out biofeedback, um, EMDR therapy, sand play therapy, Reiki, healing touch. I mean, all the different tools that are listed in the book, I tried them all. And I uh -huh. still utilize those in my life today. It sounds familiar, doesn't it, Heidi? I've done a few of those things. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and an existential journey. What about the business of death? Uh, you know, all those papers, the phone calls, the uh, um, insurance company. I always like to say that we should, the grievers should be able to outsource the business of death because we're the ones who are grieving and traumatized we don't have the capacity to deal with all the business things, but yet we have to. So in my situation, we had been living overseas in Australia for seven years. And before that, we were living in Hawaii for seven years. So we didn't have a lot of connections here in San Diego. I grew up here, but my husband didn't. So I didn't have all the phone calls per se. I had to deal with overseas bank accounts, overseas life insurance, overseas, all of that stuff. So fortunately for me, my father is a retired um, military officer and he is very adept at getting all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed. So I gave the business of death over to him and he took care of all of that. Wow, lucky girl. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's because uh, I know it, it. It is quite a complicated thing for people. And uh, my fortunately, my husband had been ill, and he made a notebook for me of every password, everything, anything that I would ever need to know, which was a beautiful gift to that, be left with. That is a beautiful gift. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your book, because I want to say your A to Z uh, online toolbox 
it's got everything. I mean, you cover everything, everything, your whole journey is on here. I mean, there's nothing that's not covered on breath work and counseling and doing your homework and energy therapies and all the different things. So you can just, uh, it's kind of delicious. You can just kind of dig into this and find an area that you want to try something that you want to try doing. If I've just recently had a loss, what, what area would you suggest that I dig into first? I always suggest that people start where they are and what they gravitate toward. So if someone was newly bereaved, I would suggest going to the online toolbox, which is a free resource for anyone. It's right on the A to Z Healing Toolbox website. There's a list of the 26 different tools. If they just look at that main page, you know, what calls to them? Is it counseling? Is it meditation? Is it exercise? Is it finding a medical doctor, Western medicine, Eastern medicine? I would say go to where you're comfortable because grief and trauma is so uncomfortable. So start with what you're comfortable with. And for me, that was exercise. Mm -hmm. And it was peer support. I met a woman at the gym who was also widowed and we became immediate buddies. And um, so, yes, whatever feels like it's possible and doable, start there. Mm -hmm. Now, Heidi and I have talked about the fact what the number, number one things that help you, Heidi, are peer support and, and adaptive coping skills. And the yes. thing I love about Susan's A to Z, you, you cover like, the emotional, the physical, the psychological, everything. You know, there's so much available there because as you know, grief is emotionally and psychologically, it's an emotional and psychological experience, but it also impacts our bodies. And I like how you're also talking about how do we get grief and trauma to move through our body? Like what can we do as far as body work as well? Yes. You yes. know, I think one of the things as I'm thinking about for some of our audience that are listening, people have approached me about the fact that they have these um, flashes, flashbacks of a picture where maybe they gave CPR to someone who died or they saw their loved one dying or they were with them at a time of a really huge trauma and they can't get those pictures out of their mind. And before you move on to doing some of, the, of these other things, I do think that people need to deal with some of this trauma. And there are some techniques, and you were talking about EMDR. Could you talk a little bit about the people that are really caught in that yes. trauma narrative right now to the point where they can't breathe? Yes, I actually love talking about EMDR because it was so helpful to me and my son and so many hundreds of people that I've worked with. So EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. And this is a type of therapy that was first, first came to be in the 1970s. A woman named Francine Shapiro was working with all of these Vietnam veterans coming back and they were having nightmares and flashbacks. And there's a long story behind how she came up with this idea, but the idea is to move the eyes in a bilateral direction in order to move very vivid technicolor images to a different part of the brain. So this can happen by an EMDR therapist um, having two fingers, kind of like a hypnotist, right in front of your eyes, and someone follows the fingers left, right, left, right left, right, as the image is getting processed and the therapist is asking questions over time and actually not much time, maybe four sessions to six sessions, the image just moves to a different part of the brain and it's much harder to access. Now for me, who was crying hysterically and I couldn't stare at fingers, the therapist said, is it okay if I use an alternating tapping motion on your knees? And I said, yes. And then she tapped right, left, right, left. With my son, who was five years old, he held buzzers in his hands. And as we told the story of this little boy who had this traumatic experience, and then he wound up wonderfully fine and thriving in childhood, the buzzer would go right, left, right, left. 
so it's this bilateral movement that magically there's science behind it but i say it's magic it moves images to a further part of the brain and then you're able to function and you can recall the images if you really try hard but it's harder to so then you you don't recall them as much and you can actually move forward in life right so I've, I've seen a number of people this has helped helped out um so that might be something that uh, you might want to consider one of the things i'm concerned about uh particularly with widows is finances and some of the things that we're talking about right now therapy um you know hiring people it's it's a heavy push for those people and i want to say that the internet i know that you work with soaring spirits foundation and that's a wonderful organization. Um, I think most people are on the internet, hopefully, and you can go in and look at Soaring Spirits. And there are a lot of things going on with them that can help you that are free. And um, what is your thought about, about widows and money and, and trying to get help? You know, it's definitely something that is um, an issue for many people. Fortunately, many of these therapies are covered in some way. Um, biofeedback was covered by my medical insurance. I was covered for eight sessions of biofeedback, so I didn't have to pay for that. There are many therapists who work on a sliding scale, and my therapist did that. So a sliding scale would be talking to that therapist and saying, you know, this is all I can afford. And many of them work on a sliding scale. So they might say, okay, that's fine with them. Or how about we do, you know, every other month instead of every month or every other week instead of every other week. Many therapists, you know, they signed up for this job to help people. And many of them will work with people who have a limited income. Um, there are also small virtual groups people can sign up for online and any type of group work is usually less expensive because you're in a group, you're not solo. For instance, I run small virtual support groups with A to Z Healing Toolbox and each session, session is $25. And even the people that are on a limited budget can afford $25 a week. That's a couple cups of Starbucks. And um, so there are options for people. Great. Now tell us again how we find your website. The website is a to z number two, a to z healing toolbox.com. And on there, they can find the online toolbox with free resources. They can connect with me and sign up for individual sessions or group sessions. Um, it's all virtual. So that's the beauty of the virtual world. You can connect from wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, thank you so much for being on the show today. And if you've got one piece of advice for someone who's recently had a loss, what would it be? Keep showing up, keep getting out of bed and keep reaching out. There are people there to help. Oh, thank you again so much for being on the show today. So good to thank see you. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you, Susan. I love your words of advice. And thank you so much for all that you're doing for so many. Well, I appreciate what you're doing as well. And thanks, everybody, for uh, joining us on the show today. And Heidi and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.